home stretch now. How, how's everyone feeling? Need to stand up? If you want to stand up, you can. Let's stretch. Okay. We're going to talk about the Agile Data Center. Now, you've seen this slide already. And in building towards digital transformation, a foundation towards digital transformation, we're going to really focus on the Agile Data Center space. And there's three key areas in which I'm going to focus on. It's around automation, visibility and analytics, and adaptability. So, but first I'm going to look at three areas of the data center and the value that Extreme brings in those areas. The first is the data center fabric. And there's a picture of that fabric. And typically when you look at a data center fabric, it's normally just one vendor. Well, we have vendor in inclusive architecture, which means that there's no lock-in. You have a choice of choosing which vendor will participate as part of that fabric. In addition, we also have automation that's automatically built inside the fabric, meaning that you can actually implement this fabric day zero without going out to an external automation platform to get it up and going. Also what's part of that fabric is visibility and analytics. What we call inside architecture, which is onboard guest virtual machine that's running that allows you to see exactly the data that's traversing your network and giving some intelligence to it. And finally, when you're looking at a data center fabric, you have to have management. And we can achieve that through extreme management center, one single pane of management. Another area of the data center is border routing. Now, with border routing, we need to connect to the internet. Many of you most likely move workloads and applications into the cloud, and that number is constantly, consistently growing. So therefore, you have to have a, a, a border router that can accept the traffic that's going out to the internet. So it has to be high scale. In addition, because you have different interfaces that may be a part of um, connecting to that border router, you have to have a platform that can actually buffer traffic because of the mis mismatch in speeds um, to get to those various applications in the internet. Also, with our solution, you can pay as you grow, ports on demand. So if you need more ports, you can get a license and get them. And also with the border router, we have embedded visibility and analytics. Another area, and the final one, is data center interconnect. Now, this is really for places where you have more than one data center or location. Maybe you have two data centers, two or three data centers, or you may have you know, a campus location and a data center location. Well, you need to be able to get the traffic from one area of the network, from one geographic area to another geographic area. And that's our data center interconnect solution. And again, it's very flexible. It does not really matter what's the underlying campus infrastructure or data center infrastructure. It's really agnostic. It sits up ab above that. As well, it, it really doesn't matter what WAN cloud you're using, whether it's MPLS, IP, third party vendor, it really doesn't matter. And what this does is deliver layer two and layer three services between those geographic sites. As you can see, it's deployed in pairs, which means that the high availability have to be built into it, making that pair of boxes appear as if it's just one virtual box. And lastly, again, and I'm going to be repeating this over and over again, is the ability to have visibility and analytics, the inside architecture that gives you insight into the traffic. So why a new data center? Well, if you look at current data centers that are deployed today, many of them have been around for a number of years which means that they may be monolithic 
installations. When I say monolithic, it means basically is that it's very difficult to actually configure new functionality and features. It's really manual driven, basically CLI based, and typically is not very efficient. So therefore, when you look at that new data center, you want a data center that's built for speed and efficiency, that you can add features and functionality very quickly and automation is built in. You kind of liken this to um, going on vacation. 10 years ago when we went on vacation, what do we pack other than our clothes? We pack the cell phone, you packed the camera, you may pack uh, your PC if you want to do some work. By the time you packed all those things, your, your suitcase may be too heavy for the airport, you may have to pull some things out. But anyhow, by carrying and packing all those things and putting them around your neck or putting them in your pocket, it made it very inefficient because you had to carry those things to really get the benefit of your full vacation. Well, with cell phones today, all that stuff is embedded. You can work from it, you can take pictures, you can answer phone calls, you can do all of those things. Very, very efficient. And that's the way the new data centers are built today, at least extreme data center, that gives you that efficiency and features that you need. So I'm gonna go over just quickly some industry insights. And here's one from Gardner, and it states that by 2022, that enterprises that implement CLI would be decreased down to only 25%, from 70% down to 25%. There's a reason for that. Again, more in line with automation and getting things done much quicker. Also, IDC states in order to move towards a digital transformation environment, most infrastructures, over 50% of them, will have to migrate their infrastructure to improve on the agility. And lastly, uh, with Intel DCM survey that went out and surveyed, 59% says visibility is very difficult because of the varied technologies that they have what's inside the data center. So it appeared from, from an industry perspective that many enterprises today will have to do something to their existing infrastructure or data centers to move towards a digital transformation environment. You've seen this slide, I believe Ed talked about this already. So from a Gardner Magic Quadrant perspective, we are dedicated to deliver on the infrastructure and the data center for digital transformation. We've been moving up and to the right, and we continue to invest in that area to continue moving in that direction. So let me just go a little bit deeper, a little technical deep dive, not too deep. If I do, just uh, somebody yell out. So data center fabric designs. The path to the new data center. All of us have data centers that are deployed today, right? We all have data centers. So with that existing data center, we know that, again, I mentioned that most of those data centers are very slow, very manual, um, very difficult to add new features and functionality. So what do you typically do? Well, you add additions to the data center, perhaps extreme data center fabric. And this is will reduce risk as you start to deploy new technologies. Well, you can't have basically two data center technologies without connecting them together. So there has to be a level of interoperability to connect those two data centers together, providing you the digital transformation agility that you need, as well as provide the cloud speed to deliver new services inside the data center. So with this interconnect, you have now some interoperability between the existing and the new data center. But it's more than just connecting 
links between the old and the new infrastructure. That's easy. We also have to look at the holistic approach in the data center, both from a management and automation perspective. So therefore, with Extreme Management Center, it, no longer, it has to support not just the new data center um, infrastructure, but as well as the existing data center infrastructure as well. So it has to be multi-vendor support. In addition to that, we need to have automation that can be tapped into the new as well as existing data center. So again, automation is multi-vendor and that's done with Extreme Workflow Composer. This here will give you the full uh, path to a new data center, not requiring you to rip and replace your existing infrastructure. So where do we start from a design perspective? Well, there's several areas you have to consider. And we're just going to go into a few of these today. Um, but there's the physical design, links and speeds and chassis, what you need there. There's also the logical design. And when I say logical design, you have to now look at your applications and determine the traffic flow that's happening there. A while ago, a few years ago, most application flows into the data center was client server, which is north and southbound. Now, most flows are east and west. So you have to consider that from a logical perspective. And then the other components is, again, what I talked about is around automation, uh, management, as well as visibility and analytics. So let's just look at one simple data center in which extreme can provide. So in this case, we can start very small. Very small data center can be just a pair of switches in your data center acting as one logical entity. And what this pair of data center switches do would be having your servers connect into it, having your storage connect into it, and also having your WAN or core connecting into it as well. So it's a multi-function pair of switches that's doing that functionality. Almost like a, a collapse element inside your data center that's doing uh, these functions. But what if you want to expand that? What if you want to grow it? Well, you should do, be able to do that very seamlessly without disrupting your current and existing deployment. So what you can do is add another pair of logical switches in your network and then create a fabric, an automatic fabric between that. And now you just take in that existing deployment model where you had perhaps a one U high type switch that had 48 ports, so 48 times two, which provides you 96 ports, you grew beyond that, you just added another 96 ports into your infrastructure very seamlessly. But if you need to grow beyond that, again, add another pair of switches, extend the fabric across, and you keep doing that until you fill up that capacity. All this should be able to be added very seamlessly and very automatically. And these are this sort of solution, this very small solution, they, they're ideal for these small data centers or hyper-converged environments. So, <clears throat> if you grow beyond that small data center, or you have requirements for more ports than what that small environment can bring, you can now look at what we call a standard deployment model inside a data center, which is a three-stage cloud technology. Now, the CLO network was developed and deployed back in the 50s to address uh, uh, requirements around the telephony switch network. And in that deployment model, instead of having one big giant crossbar switch, which made things very inefficient, they implemented multi-stage smaller switches. So applying that to today's technologies inside the data center, we have now multi-stage switching 
inside a data center with this claw architecture. And it's called three stages because we have an input stage when traffic comes in, we have a destination or output stage, and then we have an intermediate stage. So that's the three-stage claw architecture. The intermediate stage is called the spine. The input-output stage is called the leaf. So with this common design that's typically implemented in a lot of different data centers today, you have the spine that connects to all the leaves. So the spine doesn't have endpoints connected to it. It's the leaves that provides that level of connectivity to your compute and storage farms. Also, the leaf also provides you the capability of dual connecting servers into your infrastructure what we call a dual leaf deployment. And lastly, we also have another special leaf that's called the border leaf. And that's really the input and output with, uh, from that spine itself, in and out of the fabric. Um, so that fabric may be connected, need to go out to the WAN or out to the core or out to the internet. That's what the border leaf is for. And because that border leaf sits at the edge of that fabric, that's a good place to deploy your firewalls, your load balancer, and other security platforms that you may have integrated there. It also provides an area in which you can connect your existing infrastructure to, into as well inside this new fabric. So what's important with the CLO architecture is that it is a scale-out architecture. As I grow my applications, whether they are applications that's on-prem or in the cloud, all I need to do is add additional leaves into my infrastructure, into inside this fabric, in order to meet those needs. Now, as this really grow into a large-scale data center, you may, you may need to add an additional middle layer, and that's what we call a super spine. So you would take that spine leaf deployment, kind of group it into what we call a pod. Now you have multi, uh, multiple pods connected into this super spine layer, connecting these all together. So in this case, now you're moving from a single pod supporting thousands of servers into a hyperscale infrastructure that can support tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of servers. Okay, so this can go with extreme from a very small data center to really a hyperscale data center using the same platforms. Now we really don't talk about speeds and fees, but it is important when you are talking about um, of designing of a network. So take your existing infrastructure, and now you're starting to receive servers that um, 25 gig. But your existing infrastructure has uplinks that may be 10 gig in your network, in your data center. So if you do the math real quick, and if you take your top of rack switch that's typically 48 ports, you take 48 times your uh, you know, you know, number of ports that you have, in this case a simple math, you will see that out of that network you will get approximately a 12, 15 to 1 over subscription ratio. Now for data centers that require that you know, delivery of traffic, that over subscription is typically too high. And no, people normally do not build data centers with that sort of ratio. So what do you need to do? You need to have an, a, 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 a data center switch or family that can support not only 10 gig uplinks, but the, you know, or 40 gig uplinks, but has a capability of supporting 100 gig uplinks. Now, if I can just now enable the 100 gig uplinks on that same infrastructure, 
that reduces my oversubscription ratio for those 25 gig servers that are deployed down to six to one, something that's much more manageable. So something to consider as you move towards a new data center is that you will eventually be getting new servers that automatically come uh, with 25 gig interfaces. Today, with your existing infrastructure, you may have to kind of set your infrastructure so that it only connects in at 10 gig and not 25 gig. But if you have the capability of moving from 40 gig uplinks to 100 gig uplinks, then that's what you may want to do. So 10 gig, 40 gig links, uplinks may be okay. However, with 25 gig server connectivity, 100 gig uplinks are required. Now, <clears throat> we talked about the CLO architecture, and here's a picture of it. But there's two areas of that CLO architecture we need to consider. There's the underlay, which is the physical topology and routing of that particular network that responsible for delivering traffic from one port to another. Now, there's different underlay protocols that can run, whether it's layer two, layer three, OSPF, ISIS. We chose to use BGP as our underlay technology. And we chose BGP is because it's highly scalable. What's the largest network, public network that uses BGP today? The internet, right? Great scale. And so why wouldn't that work inside a data center? So we use BGP as that. In addition to that, uh, with BGP, it allows us to create policy for traffic engineering as well. So BGP is used as the underlay. But that addressed the physical topology. There's also what we call an overlay. And what the overlay does is allow us to build virtual services or paths over this physical or underlay network. So now, instead of it being more hardware driven, our paths are now more software driven, created as needed based off the services that you have deployed. <clears throat> so these virtual services network allows you to extend layer two and layer three services across the network. Now, the starting points and endpoints of these VSNs occur at the top of rack switches. There's another overlay network that's widely deployed that's being used today. Also, there is a controller-based overlay architecture from VMware called NSX. And inside that infrastructure with NSX, you can also deliver layer two services across your existing network infrastructure in the data center. The only difference between a controller list using BGP EVPN using a, a VXLAN uh, for the data plane traffic of it, and encapsulation, versus that of NSX is that the virtual tunnel starts at the hypervisor of the server versus the top of rack. That's it. You can have embedded virtualization on your network with extreme data center switches, or you can move, uh, you know, use the existing, or have customers who's very interested in using NSX over the same infrastructure. But something to keep in mind is that they are not interoperable. So just keep that in mind for you know you, you, if you're considering um, this sort of technology. Now I just kind of went over that fairly quickly. But what we do at Extreme is that we do all the heavy lifting. So therefore, we have and deliver extreme validated designs. And what extreme validated designs are, 
reference network architectures that are vetted out, that we test and make sure that they work, and essentially become a cookbook for you guys. Meaning that if you want to deploy a network that meets these solutions, you have now a guide. Now, if you want to add, it's, it's a cookbook, so anyone that's uh, spend time in the kitchen, I know a couple guys do, they may want to add a little flavor here, a little flavor there, and go off exactly what the recipe you know, adds in the cookbook, and it allows you to do that. So if you have any questions, we have internal resources to actually take these designs back to what we call a war room area to make sure that it does work. But in addition to the validated designs, we also have smaller documents like at a glance that give a high level view of the solution itself and the use case it's for, as well as a solution brief, which gives a little bit more layer of information for those designs. So it comes as a package of documentations for you to reference as you build out your data center um, networks. So let's now talk a little bit about automation and management. Now, I mentioned earlier that with extreme data center solutions, we have embedded automation. And as you can see here, we have embedded fabric automation that allows you to do day zero operation. We're gonna go a little bit more details in just a minute or so on how that actually operates. But what happens after day zero? How do you add automation now to your new data center or your existing infrastructure for the next five years? Well, we do that with Extreme Workflow Composer. So Extreme Workflow Composer has to interface to the Extreme Data Center as well as to the Extreme Campus delivering that. And we call that Automation Assist. Meaning that you don't have to lose jobs by implementing automation. It's assisting. Let me give you an analogy. We have in our cars today, new cars, we have lane departure assist. So I'm driving down the highway at 75 miles per hour with lane departure assist on. How many of you guys is gonna take your hands off the wheel and fall asleep? I don't think none of us will. Not if you wanna live. So with lane departure assist, it will help you keep you in that lane just for a minute. You may have to take your hands off for a few minutes, a couple minutes, but you're gonna put your hands back on because guess what? You feel much better and you wanna live and get to your destination. So automation assist is the same way. You're still gonna need resources to handle your data center as well as um, additional services that you may uh, require with inside your enterprise, but with assisting, it allows you to now do things that are repeatable, things that are a little bit mundane, so you can have time for those more important tasks. In addition to that, you also need to interface that to the extreme management for one-stop shopping for not only just regular management, but for network access control, for application telemetry, telemetry, compliance, monitoring, all from one single platform. Lastly, this has to be supported for third party as well. Integration with Extreme Data Center, integration with Extreme Workflow Composer for automation, as well as integration into the Extreme Management Center. So as we deployed our solutions with Extreme, it's not an all or nothing approach. Meaning that you can start off crawling and just use embedded fabric automation, day zero, day zero automation for an Extreme Data Center. I want to spin up a fabric, type a command, and it's done. And if that's your level of automation, that's fine. 
But now as you start to dip your toe in the water, you may want to start to walk a little bit and say, I'm more interested in what else that Extreme can deliver from an automation perspective. So we have the platforms such as Workflow Composer, as I mentioned, as well as Extreme Management Center. But if you're used to using tools such as Python and Ansible and REST APIs, we have the programmatic interfaces to those existing platforms to support that. So you can write your automation offline using these various tools and interface that directly into our infrastructure, data center infrastructure, as well as into these platforms with Workflow Composer and Extreme Management Center. But you may really need to um, customize your deployment, do more cross-domain automation, or you may want to automate into various tools and third-party applications. Uh, when I say cross-domain, I'm saying complete IT, storage, uh, compute, as well as network. So in order to build those automation across domain into the various applications that exist in the data center, we have Extreme, management, uh, Extreme Workflow Composer that gives you that platform to be able to now run with automation. Now, this may require some DevOps knowledge in order to do that, but Extreme have services in-house that you can reach out to and we can deliver those services as well if you need that level of customization. Now, let's just talk a minute about embedded fabric automation. Now, inside that CLO architecture in the data center, on each of those platforms, we have what we call a guest VM running. And on that guest VM has an application called EFA, or Embedded Fabric Arch Architecture. And what you can do is execute a command from one spine in the network that will automatically build out that day zero deployment model for you. Pretty cool. So what would you need to do? Well, so you take your architecture, you take your boxes, your data center boxes, your leaf and your spines, and you start to cable them up. You put links in between them. So you have the link in between your leafs for you know, dual server connectivity if requ required. Now, in addition to that, you have to connect your leafs and your spines together. OK, great. Lastly, you have to connect your switches to a management network. Now, what would you normally have to do at this point? I would have to go into one box and type a whole bunch of commands to get that box configured. Then I have to move to the next box and do the same thing and keep walking through each and every single box before I get a working model in my data center. How much time do you think that would take? This is only six boxes. But in order to build out an IP fabric in your data center, I can tell you there's quite a few commands. So it may take a while. Then you have to worry about the human error because you have to verify whether it operates. And more likely, with all these commands, you made a mistake somewhere along the way. And you have to troubleshoot that. It takes a while to build out. With extreme fabric automation, what do you do? You log into the guest VM on the spine switch. Once you log in, you prompt it, and you issue a single command. And basically, all you do is give the IP addresses of your spine and the IP addresses of your leaves. Once you, that's given, it will go out, add those switches inside its database. It would then validate the fabric and then deploy it and configure it. That all occurred in under about three seconds, a little over three seconds three seconds to deploy a full IP fabric. Again, Ed talked about in his previous one about 
11 times faster with automation in the campus space. You can see the magnitude of speed that you get with this embedded fabric automation in the data center. Now, this can be demonstrated outside uh, at the demonstration booths. We have that up and going. So if you're very interested, go, go to the, the demo booth for the data center. So day in provisioning, what else needs to be done? Well, again, there's other things from automation that you can build. Is VLAN provisioning, VRFs, you know, virtual ethernet, static gateways, and connection to your, you know, your core links or your internet. These things have to be provisioned. All these things for day in provisioning can be done, again, with automation tools that you have with Workflow Composer, Extreme Management Center, or other uh, automation tools, such as Ansible and you know, you know, uh, Python and, and those tools as well. So you have to consider that. Now, just a little a minute on Workflow Composer. This is a GUI workflow composer, and what that really is is an event-driven um, automation platform. And this platform came from an open source um, called Stackstorm. And so, you know, a few years ago, Brocade had purchased Stackstorm um, and actually now package it to be delivered as a supportable platform, as well as kept the open source community. With the open source community, they had developed a lot of integrations into various tools, applications, across cross-domain applications, as well as infrastructure. And you can actually see those integrations by going to um, Stackstorm Exchange. There's thousands of integrations. So by you know, force the power of the force of the community or open source. Folks that needed integration built these integrations and then published them to these sites so that you can now pull that down and use that from day one. So if you want to integrate with, you know, Kubernetes, Docker, you know, uh, you know other various um, cloud-based um, services, you can get these right from Stackstorm Exchange. Now, basically with Extreme Workflow Composer, you, it's, uh, you have sensors, these integration packs into your existing infrastructure and applications. Go, it's fed into a rules-based engine, if this, then that, and then an action is created after that. So you can have things occur in your network based off events to actually do configurations or some sort of action to your network. You can even integrate into Slack and issue commands from Slack to actually do actions on the network as well. Here's a simple example of a workflow that was created. Someone wanted to deploy hundreds of servers in a week and basically they had a spreadsheet with their servers listed, with parameters listed inside the Excel spreadsheet. And what they did was just fed that in to Extreme Workflow Composer, say configure this on this fabric, and guess what? Extreme Workflow Composer went out and configured the entire servers. Customer wanted to do this on a weekly basis, deploying hundreds of servers a week. How much time was saved doing that? We also have to think about third-party integration and entire ecosystem and how this works as well. Here's a simple example of using, integrating with VMware and software-defined storage using NetApps, uh, uh, Nutanix rather, um, using Extreme Workflow, Extreme Management Center, and Extreme Connect together and pulling together and supporting your entire ecosystem. Visibility analytics, we look at it from a vantage point, multiple vantage points in a network, whereas it's really necessary to have visibility in all areas of your data center. Um, there's network telemetry, we all use SNMP, 
but SNMP is really not that scalable anymore. So you want network telemetry information um, that's embedded on your switches to be able to deliver that. You also need visibility. I talked about the guest VM. The guest VM allows you to load, load applications, analytics applications, such as Wireshark that you can use on your network. It's distributed. So for example, we're here in New York, follow the sun knock, perhaps, it's 9 p.m. at night, you have an issue in London, 3 o'clock in the morning. What do you do? You wait until 7 or 8 until a resource come in? Or with our onboard visibility, we can actually now just go do Wireshark, steer traffic to it, look at the traffic that's there, determine if something's wrong, and then fix it automatically. And lastly, there is end-to-end um, -end application telemetry. Allow us to now look at applications' performance, give context to applications, who's using it, where they're using it, how much bandwidth data, look at all aspects of the application in the end. And this can be done across your network using the Extreme Data Center portfolio, whether it's within the data center, across the border routers, or into the cloud. We talked about Extreme Management Center supporting having that single one pane glass for full management and visibility into your network, so I won't spend much time here. And I want to summarize with why Extreme. And I kind of went over all these points already, but really it's come down to we providing you a choice of data center um, and how you deploy these new data center that builds that foundation um, towards digital transformation. You have the choice um, to seamless migrate, to you know, do it automation at your own pace, to build adaptive platforms, to have adaptive platforms with advanced software that allows you visibility and analytics for your business applications. You know, so you have a choice, no vendor lock-in with what we're proposing for a new data center. Mm -hmm.